Welcome to The Homemade Mother. My name is Jasmine and this is my channel. Welcome back everybody. Today is our final trial and error video. The very last mix that we are gonna be doing is a Bob's Red Mill mix. Now, I actually really like Bob's Red Mill a lot. It's one I'm very familiar with. Bob's Red Mill was actually the very first, the very first gluten-free mix I ever tried. So I have actually a decent amount of experience with Bob's Red Mill. It is definitely the most expensive mix you could possibly buy on the market that I have seen. All of the other mixes are about $6. This one costs 12. That's two mixes right there. So it's not the cheapest one out there, but it is quite good. Now, there are three Bob's Red Mill mixes on the market. One is just a regular gluten-free pancake mix. One is a high protein gluten-free pancake mix. And then they have this one, the paleo pancake mix. Now, the high protein pancake mix actually contains whey powder, which my husband is horribly allergic to, seeing as how we're dairy free and whey is dairy. The reason I have the paleo is mostly because I couldn't find the regular pancake mix, but also because the paleo is supposed to be a little bit on the healthier side than the regular pancake mix. So we're just gonna try this out and see how it goes. I don't know if it's gonna be good, to be honest, because it is paleo, but let's get cracking. For this mix, you need one cup of mix, just one. You also need two eggs, a tablespoon of what they specify is coconut oil that's melted, which is what I have done because that's what they told me to do, and a quarter cup of water. So. Let's do this. Okay, I just wanna make a really random comment, but because this mix doesn't get used up right away, I really appreciate the fact that they, I really appreciate that they package it into a resealable package because it makes it a whole lot easier to store it as opposed to having to dump the mix into a Ziploc bag or something. So, appreciate that. Now, do a cup of this mix. Quarter cup of water. And I'm just gonna mix that up. And now we have a tablespoon of melted coconut oil. Okay, and the last thing is two eggs. One egg down, and here's the second egg. Ooh, I totally broke that yolk, guys. <laughs> Just exploded. All right, we've got our pancake mix. And this one says to do a fourth cup of mix onto your grill and then let it sit there until the edges are cooked, I think it said. To the grill! All right, so we cooked our pancakes and this is how they turned out. I think this was the one I was the most worried about and of course it turned out to be the one that I think looks the nicest. I have no idea if it tastes good, but definitely looks the prettiest out of all of the pancake mixes we have gone through in this series. Let's really see how this goes. Let's rate this bad boy. As far as easiness, I would say this one was pretty easy. It was really easy to tell when the pancakes were done. There wasn't a lot to throw into the mix, so I would say overall, easiness, eight out of 10. They definitely bubbled more than the Dune Kirken, so always a good thing. Now, as far as ingredients, I had to add in. I would give it a seven out of 10. It wasn't hard, however, they did request that you put coconut oil in, melted coconut oil. Now, I always have that on hand. It's one of the oils that I work with fairly often. However, not everybody has that oil. Also, I find that working with coconut oil, you kind of need to know its tolerances and how it works and what happens to stuff when you add it in. Because I remember when I first started using it, it turned all sorts of things weird because coconut oil takes longer to cool and makes things look wet more. And as far as ingredients in the mix, I mean, honestly, there's like barely anything in here and all of it is definitely good for you. It is the paleo pancake mix, so of course, it's, a, it's definitely on the healthier side. So I give it a 10 out of 10, period. 
It costs a pretty penny, but there's a reason for it. Now, as far as texture goes, uh, this, one, this one's hard because it is fluffy, but it is also a little bit grainy. And I did expect that looking at the actual mix itself, it does look a little bit on the grainy side. I don't really like grainy baking, but sometimes that's just what you get, especially when you're trying to be healthy. I would give this a six out of 10. It's not a terrible texture, but it does have that grainy texture to it, which is less desirable. As far as taste goes, I would give it like a 4 out of 10. If you put syrup on it, you can't taste the weirdness of the flavor as much, but if you don't put syrup on it, it's definitely there. You can taste that coconut oil, it's really potent, and there's just something else in there that also has a not as desirable flavor. It doesn't quite taste like pancakes. Overall, I would give it, I give it a 6 out of 10. It is a good mix. It does have a lot of good positive things to it. It was easy to make. The actual ingredients inside are all good for you. Well, mostly. It puffed and it bubbled and it browned and it did all of that stuff, but the texture wasn't quite right and the flavor wasn't quite there. Would I buy it again? I'm not sure. Maybe. If I'm on a health kick. Then again, if I'm on a health kick, I probably wouldn't do pancakes. So probably not. That's it. Our series of trial and error is officially over. I can't believe that we've done so many mixes in one month. I'm ready to move on to something new, something fresh, something that has a little bit more homemade in it and also a little bit more love. So stay tuned, find out what's going on in the next month. That's it, that's all for now.